Chapter 9, Wonderstorm. This is the season 1 finale, right? Crazy. Stop being mysterious. If you're gonna make a claim like that, you owe everyone an explanation. I talked to the wolf. Ava told me. Uh, here we go. <laughs> no, it's true. I can understand animals. Yeah. I've always been different. It's hard That's for, for sure. me to make friends with other kids. But with animals, somehow I have this connection. I realized I could understand what they were saying. I knew he had special powers. <laughs> what does he mean he can't fit in with other kids? He's better than everyone. He's better than all kids put together. Except for Alice. She's cool too. I don't know how far the story has progressed so far in the in the seasons that are out. He's going to be the dragon prince. He's going to ride the dragon. So the title is going to have two meanings. That's my guess. And one day he'll be the dragon king. But eventually the world will catch up to Ezrin and he'll have all the friends he needs. I mean, what the hell are other kids doing? Legos? <laughs> He's like saving the world. Can you believe this? Tell him no. Why would he lie? Because he's a kid? Tell him no. First time he did this, I asked him to prove it. So Ezrin said that a group of raccoons had told him there was a treasure hidden behind a waterfall. But when I went through the waterfall, did I find a treasure? No. But did my underwear get soaked? I have since learned you cannot trust raccoons. Good lesson. I believe you, Ez, but I also know the miracle healer is real. Because I have my Ava. All these stories together just don't add up. I believe Ezrin, though. Mount Kalik. Yes. The tallest mountain in Catullus. You might say it's the Catullist. <laughs> that is the funniest joke I've heard in my entire life. You need to get out more. <laughs> What's this? Uh, I don't know. What? Some dirt you uh, the scoop The shortest up. mountain. <laughs> oh. So now I'm not even sure you got the original joke. And that was the moment Soren realized he wanted to die. Maybe we should find out what it is? I'm going to share an old elven proverb with you. When traveling up a mountain trying to save a dying dragon egg and you hear a spooky sound, just keep walking. Very specific. Wow, that's really specific. <laughs> what if someone needs help? This kid's gonna save the whole world. You have a good heart. It's super annoying. That's true, good people are annoying. <laughs> I was actually just talking about this in relation to Katara. People who have this strongly defined sense of justice, they can be hard to be around because they sort of cast a light on your own inadequacies and your lack of doing anything. I think the danger for Ezrin is that he's just so young, he can't really do anything himself. So by him wanting to help, he puts other people in danger. But he is a good kid and he has a great heart. He's going to be the Dragon King one day. If you say so. I thought it was going to be spiders. Keep moving. <laughs> no! At least tell them you're going into the woods. Ah! He's getting good at this. Oh, I feel like it's in my hair! <laughs> really? It's a two-ton magical spider. It's like Evangelion Unit 1 colored. Wait a second. Oh, I can understand it. Oh, that fresh night air. Oh, oh. <coughs> ah, Claudia, I think your horse just... Wasn't the horse. <laughs> no, stop. And that was the moment Soren realized he wanted to die. Why does Claudia make so many odors? <laughs> She's just like a walking... Odor machine. Mount Cosmelius. <laughs> and that was the moment he realized he Kill wanted me. to die. Wasn't the horse. And why is she so proud of it? <laughs> Damn it. You gotta think that was deliberate, right? Soren's talking about the smell of the mountain air. Getting a deep whiff. Wasn't the horse. Wasn't the horse. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm disgusted. And a little impressed. It's an interesting adventure that they're on together. It's not real. I'm sure of it. I'm going out there to prove it. Don't! Do it, Ezrin. <laughs> Ezrin, I owe you an apology. If you really mean it... I do. Then you have to do the thing. Oh, we doing things now? In this show too? What is happening? <laughs> so confused. <laughs> this is the thing? Ellen's famous jerk face dance. Oh yeah. He did mention that a long time ago. Knees higher, knees higher. He's really doing it. Does he practice this or what? Goodbye, Unit 1. Uh, Miracle Healer! Hello! We're here! I don't know. I just showed up, then she showed up.
Articuno? There's no miracle healer. She's a fake. What? How do you know? She's a moon mage, an illusionist. None of those monsters were real. They were all illusions. What about that giant slug that they killed? That wasn't real? I know it's a magical world and everything, but I feel like they're not appreciating the fact that this woman just flew down from the moon on a bird. I created an illusion. A leg that others would see and feel, even though it wasn't real. Wait, what? Ava has three legs? She never needed that fourth leg to be happy. Everyone else did. Wow, props to Ava for getting by all this time carrying this girl. The only chance of saving it now would be to hatch it. Whoa. Sky dragons can only be born in the eye of a storm. Can you make an illusion storm? No, that can't be. There has to be a way to save it. Have you tried sitting on it? I'll let you both down. You're so good and brave. Again, it's obvious to everyone except for Rayla how awesome she is. But that's how it goes. If you have an insecurity about something, which in Rayla's case is like always letting people down, every chance you get, you're going to see it. Everyone has a story that they tell themselves about themselves that feels like it's real. For whatever reason, your mind works really hard to keep that story alive, which is why people like Ezrin are great because they don't have that story. So they can just tell it like they see it. These kids are just carrying all the emotional weight of this group. Wait a minute. It can only hatch in a storm. Illusion storm. What is life? Oh, real storm! I see, so we let the storm out. That's crazy to think we might get the dragon this episode. No! Oh, really? can redeem herself. Nice. There you go. Now we can stop thinking about how often you fail. This is a pretty epic egg opening. Nah, it's fine. That is a freaky looking dragon. Looks like a My Little Pony. One miracle is enough for me today. Whoa! He just did that? Just like that? The power of dragons. <laughs> this is a very friendly baby dragon. <laughs> yeah, she knows. So he just looks like that now? <laughs> That's just his face? Okay. Wow. So that's the end of season one. I'm enjoying the show a lot so far, but I feel like they're sort of keeping a lot of things really close to the vest. The first nine episodes were a lot of setup, which is sort of what I expected. They're trying to build an entire world. And overall, they did a pretty good job of that. The world feels coherent. It's interesting. It has a lot of those nice fantasy elements that I love. Character wise, I feel like the show had a really strong start, but like the latter half of it was sort of just more like events, plot events. I've heard that season two and season three is where things really start going, which is exciting because I do feel like the potential is really there. One of them is Ezrin's strength of character. I really feel like there's a lot that the show can do with him. I'm wondering if they're going to grow them up. I wonder if like time will pass season to season. Also, I feel like there's a lot there for Claudia and Soren. They're really intriguing characters to me because they're the, the children of the, the villain, but they're good and they're interesting and they're different. Their growth is one of the things I'm most excited about seeing going forward, especially Soren. Like I've been intrigued by him since the first episode because I feel like his best characterization happened in the early episodes when he was sort of looking out for Callum and he didn't seem as like low IQ early on. And Claudia also. Claudia is very intriguing because she's so powerful and talented but she's sort of in daddy's world, right? And her morality is sort of set around what daddy wants, even to the extent that she might be willing to kill her own brother, although I doubt that. And there's so many little things that have been set up but not really explored, like the queen's backstory. What happened to King Harrow? Amaya, what is Viren's full objective? What's gonna happen now that the dragon is in the world? Is he gonna be able to hide in Ezrin's backpack? What's gonna happen when the egg gang intersects with Claudia and Soren? Like there's so many things that this lays the groundwork for. And so what I want to see as a viewer is I want all the elements to sort of come together so magic can happen, no pun intended. But with six seasons left, at least, you know, in terms of the total plan, I have no doubt that that's gonna happen. While this show is a little bit light in terms of its themes and characterization and things like that, 
that, it's still a lot of fun to watch, like I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Although I noticed the frame rate thing, it didn't bother me at all. The music's incredible, I think it looks beautiful, ignoring the, the jumpiness, the art itself, and some of the effects, they look fantastic. So my feeling going into season 2 is excitement. Like I'm really looking forward to seeing what will happen, how everything will sort of come together. In a way, this season felt like a tease. But anyway, that's the end of season 1, thank you all so much for tuning in, I really appreciate it. Thanks for all the likes, comments, etc. And so I'll see you next week for season 2.